Hello Internet, I'm Guy. A few weeks ago, Quinn on Blondie Hack's channel released a video about making a scribing tool using a sewing needle. Uh, by the way, Quinn, if you're watching this, thanks for all your inspirations. Um, I took a different spin on making a needle holder scribing tool. Um, I was inspired by Dremel tools and the way the little collet chart grips down on uh, the items that you put in, you know, the tools you put into a Dremel. Same thing with an X-Acto blade holder. It just crimps down like that using basically a collet chuck. So this is what I made. It has a little collet chuck right here that you can tighten down. I'll show you that close up shortly. So enjoy the journey as I share how I made my particular version of this tool. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I learned a few things and hopefully you will too. Thanks for watching. This is the scribing tool I've been using for decades. I think I bought it in art school in the 1970s. Uh, it's a lithographer scratching tool, basically to scratch into metal to create the grooves in a metal plate that then become the ink lines in the piece of paper. But uh, it's time to retire this. So this is what I'm making today. As you can see here, it's got this part that screws on just like it would in a Dremel. And then the needle goes in there very easily. And you can see that it looks a great deal like a Dremel chuck. So it's, it's basically a Dremel collet chuck, if you will. So I'm going to jump right in and show you how I made it. This is a quick sidebar about rotary tools. This is my classic Dremel Moto tool that I've had for many years. This I just purchased from Micromark, and I like it a lot for several reasons. One of them is this weighs almost a pound, and this one comes in at 9 ounces. Sorry, I can't do metric on those uh, weights. And uh, also, this one spins at about 30,000 RPM. This one's 20,000 RPM, which I just found a little more pleasant to use. And the hand and the size is really comfortable. So I've got a sewing needle that a friend of mine gave me, and this comes out at uh, 055. So a number 53 drill bit will come out at 058, which is fine. So I'm going to cut off the needle at a reasonable length using a diamond tool here. There we go. I'm starting with the brass stock in my three-jaw chuck, which I happen to know is about eight thou off-center, eccentric. Uh, ominous foreshadowing here, but I'm plunging ahead anyway. So I'm doing the center drill for the hole that will hold the needle. Simple maneuvers here, basic stuff. It takes a while to drill this hole because it's pretty deep. I want to have a lot of room to get that needle all the way in. I'm cleaning it off with a wire brush. So now I'm checking the fit of the needle and yes, it just drops right in there. Looks great. So now I'm going to blue up the brass stock so I can put some marks uh, where the shape of this collet chuck will be. Quick sidebar about bluing. Guess which side was done with the Sharpie versus the steel blue? This was done with this. This is the kind that you uh, wipe on like that. And, you know, it's okay, but honestly, I find a Sharpie to be a much better tool. So now it's all blued up. I'm holding up the collet from a Dremel, and I'm just going to trace off some of the essential lines here so that I know where to start shaping it. So I'm still holding it up there and I'm going to try now to use a woodworking uh, carbide insert scraping tool that I would use on my woodworking lathe. But notice it's kind of wiggling there because again my chuck is about 8 thou off center and I'm not liking the feel of this so far but I'm going to persevere and see if I can go a little further with it. I brought in the live center thinking I could firm things up a little bit, but I'm still ignoring the fact that the chuck is just so off-center that it's wobbling around. The, the metal is just not centered on the hole. So I switched to my collet chuck, which has much better concentricity. However, using this scraping tool is just really not working that well. Um, I'm not getting through the material quick enough. So then, obviously, I changed to using my uh, cross slide, and I've set it up at a good angle that matches the angle on the Dremel uh, part. And, yeah, this, this is working out a lot better. In time lapse here, where it's sped up, you can see I'm just getting it down to a really nice shape there. So 
So now I'm using this round nose carbide cutter that I found somewhere surplus. I really like it because it leaves a very good finish on brass. I'm just reducing the diameter a little bit before I plunge in and do the inner shaping of the part of the collet that needs to be a smaller diameter there. And you can see that's where it's going to start. Still need to reduce a bit more diameter before I start reducing the, the section of this, the back of the collet where the slot goes. So here I go, digging in and making that part narrower so that it will flex more easily when it uh, compresses down around the needle. Yeah, that's looking pretty good right there. So now over to the milling machine. I've got an 025 slitting cutter, my favorite cutter with the mandrel that I made myself. Um, going to slit all the way through. I've already figured out the depth and as you can see it goes pretty far back into there. Just like the Dremel collet does. So second pass here I'm doing 90 degree passes to form a nice X. And that worked really well. You can see it looks really pretty. I'm reducing the diameter slightly here for the threaded section. So now I've got a 3 8 by 32 die set in my uh, die holder here and I'm just beginning to turn it by hand to get it started. And then just plowing through, just doing it all by hand. It turned really nicely because I got that radius down perfectly for this thread. It threaded on really nicely. Now I have the rod in a live center on the left and I'm just going to clean up the whole surface here. Uh, the diameter here is not important, it's just for look and feel at this point. I'm using my motorized carriage to drive the carriage back and forth. This is something I did in a previous video and it works out really well. So now I'm just going to part the whole thing off to length. Hi again, forgive the interruption, but I just wanted to remind you that if you're enjoying the video, please give me a like or a super like where that's a little heart icon with the dollar sign below where you can contribute to support this particular video. And if you want to support my ongoing work with this channel, you can support me on Patreon. Um, I also welcome comments and suggestions, so I look forward to seeing what you have to say. And I hope you're enjoying the video. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. I'm using some half-inch mild steel to make the end cap that threads on to compress the collet. So I'm just bringing it down to dimension a little bit and checking dimension and position. That's where it's going to fit, roughly. Putting a sharpie mark there because I made it a bit longer than I wanted to, so I'm going to now part that off. I just made too much. Now I'm going to open up that hole uh, just to the perfect dimension for the threads that I'm going to tap into there. Checking again my positioning and the diameter that I need at the final hole at the outer end there that will compress the collet. So I'm drilling that hole all the way through. Now I'm going to knurl the whole thing. Of course, knurling is important. I'm going to use some 30 weight oil here, regular machine oil, keep it all lubricated. Can't have too much oil when you're knurling. Yeah, that came out great. It looks good. So now I have my uh, tap follower in the tailstock, and I've got a crescent wrench on the square section of the tap. And again, I'm just going to do this entirely by hand, uh, just going fraction of a turn at a time into the steel. It's working out pretty good. That's a bottoming tap that I have there, so it's going to get me a nice bottom end, and I'm driving it all the way out, which is a nice convenient way to get the heck out of there. 
going to check the collet to see how it's going to fit in there. And yeah, it's kind of bumping into that hole that I had thought I drilled all the way in, but apparently I didn't do it big enough or deep enough. And I've been turning it in there and getting some chips out. Um, so I'm going to part this off now and then figure out how to finish that hole. There it goes. So now I'm going to clean that end. It turns out the hole didn't go all the way through, which is fine. It allows me to have the opportunity now to clean this end off and then flip it around so I can bore using a center drill, which has the right taper to match the taper on the collet. So I'm going to go all the way in there and drill this all the way through. I'm going to go by feel because I'll be able to tell when I get in there when I've gone all the way through. And now I'm going to blue this up so I can see how well the collet will fit in that hole. I'm going to test fit it by screwing it in. And it's not screwing in as far as I'd like, so I think I need to do something about that hole here. Yeah, it's hitting right there. That looks pretty good. I decided I needed to bore out that hole a little bit more. And then I'm going to bring in that center drill one more time and bring in that taper again to match the collet. So I'm just going in a little bit there, that's all it needs. So there it is. Now I can tighten that down. As you can see, the collet is tightening down. I've set up my cross slide at a nice angle to make a taper on the outer part there. This will be the pointy end of the tool, where it comes right down to where the pin goes into the collet. So I want it to look nice and clean there, just like it would on a Dremel chuck. That's a good first pass. I'm going to clean it up with the file. This mild steel is pretty rough stuff, so it takes a lot of fussing and cleaning to look nice. And just to be clear, I haven't made any plans or drawings whatsoever. I'm just doing this all on the fly. So now I'm going to knurl the part that is just above where the uh, collet goes, the collet ring goes over the collet. Again, 30 weight oil. Yeah, that looks really pretty. Nice knurling. This is the back end, or the top end, of the whole tool, and I'm just doing this purely for decoration. Uh, I've gotten into a habit of knurling things just to make them look pretty. So that went on really well, and now I'm going to make some decorative grooves. Again, purely decorative. It just adds some charm to the tool. and then a couple more evenly spaced spots there. I think it came out pretty well and I hope you've enjoyed watching.